Hello and welcome to my channel, Mary Born ND. And this is the October sip and chat. And as usual, my sip is water. You can sip whatever. You may want coffee, you may want tea. Maybe you'll have water. I really didn't know what I was going to say in this October sip and chat because there's so much to talk about and a lot of it is sad, a lot of it is scary, but a lot of it is joy. And when I was going through my training for being a naturopath, we went through a psychology book and discussed Maslow's theory um, of needs. And I will put uh, a picture of that in, in the, later on so that you can look at it and perhaps discuss it with other people. But his model for understanding motivational needs at the very bottom one, the very first thing that he discusses is air, water, those basic needs that we need for life and how often we just take them for granted, being able to take a nice deep breath, you know, and unless you're challenged with that, you don't even think about it. And we do it all the time throughout the day. Just taking a breath. Water our basic need for water and food. You know, we can go days without food. But you can't go very long without water and you certainly can't go very long without air. So I wanna take a moment, send prayers and love to those who have been hit, if you will, by this Hurricane Helene and the coming threat of Milton. I just can't imagine what some of you are experiencing. I've been, we were in Michigan, 
So I've been without electricity. One year, we went seven days without electricity. And to find some place to have a nice hot shower, that was divine. To have a hot meal, oh my goodness, that lifted our spirits. So uh, my heart goes out to you if you've been involved in any of that, um, oh, to see your hard work and your, your, all of your goods being washed away must be horrible. And then I hear the people talk, we're all okay. We all survived. And then the next thing is we have water and we have air to breathe, <laughs> warmth. The days are starting to get cooler. The nights are even colder. Last night we had a temperature of 37. That's cold and it's October. It's only gonna get colder. So, I have brought in some of my plants. I'll show you where I put my plants in the wintertime, my geraniums primarily. And they create beauty throughout the winter. Um, we enjoy watching them bloom. Uh, they're in a nice sunny window. Sunshine is really an important need. So let's look at the joys of the garden in October. I was able to pick a hydrangea bloom. Those hydrangeas have been in the ground three years. I got them in 2021 and planted them. And so many fond memories of that trip. That was to Mackinac Island. Uh, if those of you who have seen it in my channel, it's one of the popular videos that I've shown and proven winners gave everybody free plants to take home and we um, met up with somebody and they were chatting and saying that they couldn't take their plants home because they were flying home and so we got two hydrangeas and um, they're the little quick fire and this year they bloomed amidst all the <laughs> weeds and things. As you know, as of January this year, I've been diagnosed with congestive heart failure or heart disease. It hasn't failed me yet, so <laughs> I'm still here talking with you. But it has taken its toll on my ability to garden I'm so grateful for some of the things that we put in place, like the raised beds. I was able to wheel my little cart down to the uh, Bego Gardens and, and care for them as best I could. I harvested onions and green beans and um, cucumbers, and you'll you'll see that video shortly where I talk about cucumbers um, as my health to home, um, food as medicine. It has been delayed because we've had some glitches with our freeze dryer, so it's that video is not complete yet. You'll see it shortly, I hope. So we have had some beautiful weather. This has been the most amazing autumn. Uh, gorgeous today is a beautiful sunny day. And I hope to go out there today and uh, co collect some caladiums because that's one of the things that I had on my goals was to propagate caladiums this fall throughout the winter. And we'll see. We had a lovely tomato harvest. I 
was able to can seven of these crushed tomatoes. I will be canning this afternoon and making a paste, um, a spaghetti sauce from paste tomatoes, those I bought from the farmer's market. This is my last beautiful tomato of the season. The tomato plants are gone, <laughs> but they've been wonderful. We harvested seven pounds of potatoes. They were just in grow bags. I can no longer work in the ground with potatoes. So grow bags work and we've already had several meals of potatoes. And I'm grateful for the gift that, well, it wasn't a gift, we paid for it, the harvest right and the wonderful food I've been able to prepare for them. We've been able to make wonderful meals with uh, bone broth that I freeze dried. Bone broth is takes up lots of jars and you do compromise some of the nutrition when you can it because you have to can it for such a long time for such a high heat. And I like to slow cook it and then I like to freeze dry it and it makes the base for wonderful meals. In January and February, I do the pantry challenge that um, Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead does. And um, last year I videotaped a lot. I'm not sure can't commit to it this year, but we'll see what I can uh, do. But I always do the challenge that for us uh, helps me to uh, know what's in my freezer and reorganize the spaces that I have and to know what it is I need to grow for the next year. In January and February, I'm planting and planting seeds. And right now I have already harvested about 10 seeds of plants that I wanna grow that are repeats of what I grew this year. I'm very, very grateful for my green stalks. They're just steps away. And um, right now I have cherry tomatoes um, that we can pick and put in salads. I have uh, lettuce growing, herbs. So I'm very grateful for all of the joy my garden has given me. I hope that you find joy in your garden and that you find joy amidst all of the chaos that is being presented and not not really being helped by our government. You are the first line of defense. I have a video showing first aid. I did a whole series on taking care of wounds um, and helping your body heal and the things you can do while you're waiting for 911 to show up. Those people in the devastation of Helene had to be able to take care of any wounds or any conditions that arose for almost two weeks. So uh, if you want to turn to those videos, I'll link some in the description below. Understanding that preparedness not uh, only getting toilet paper, it means having the attitude that you can get through this, that love and friendship, community is as important as self-reliance. So here's to you, here's to our sip and chat. 
I hope that you found some benefit. I hope you find some joy. I hope we get to look forward to the holiday season and all the joy that is or can be had through the holidays. Christ was born. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanks to you for watching. This is Mary Bourne for the health of it.